Hello friends! Today we are going to be doing a reading vlog where I let a random reading prompt generator pick what I read. So I was thinking lately, I haven't done a lot of videos where I don't know going into the video what I'm going to be reading or roughly what I'm going to be reading. You know, even things like when I did the I can't stop reading until I find a five star, I had a general idea in my mind of like books that I was gonna read for that. This video I know nothing. We're gonna find out together because I have found this uh, reading prompt generator online. It's called Hey Reader. It looks really cool. It's not sponsored or anything by the way. I just found it <laughs> online. And they have other things like book lists and TBRs but we're looking at this random reading prompt generator. They have you can pick a card or you can spin a wheel. Oh my god we'll try both out. Okay we're gonna do this. We're not gonna find out our whole TBR now. We're gonna do this one book at a time. We'll probably read three books unless I read like a really short book at some point. And yeah that's basically what the deal is. <laughs> excited but I'm nervous because like I said I haven't done this in a long time where I go into a video with literally zero idea of what I'm gonna be reading but I thought this would be fun and I really like I haven't done a video in a long time where I get a reading prompt I want to do another episode a lot of you won't have ever seen these videos but I did two videos called booktuber scavenger hunts where I started with one booktuber and they gave me a reading prompt and then based on what I thought of the book that I read for that prompt, they sent me to the next booktuber to go to and they gave me a reading prompt and those were always really fun as well. Maybe I'll do another episode of them at some point. But yeah, I wanted to do something that gave me reading prompts. So, <laughs> this is like so much pressure. I don't wanna do it. I wanna go home. Like I can't take the pressure of it. Okay, we're gonna pick a card. Holy shit. <laughs> and then I just have to pick a book that fits that prompt, okay. Are we ready? I am recording, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to go. I want to go for this second one. <laughs> Shit. Okay. Set in my country. Okay. So it's something set in the UK. Let me take you with me. <laughs> so let me go over to my TBR car. I would like to read something. Uh, like do any of my twenty twenty two releases? Twenty twenty two, girl. It's twenty twenty three. Are there any of them set? What about, uh, is I have some questions for you? This, is that set in the UK? No, New Hampshire. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Hellbent definitely isn't. Is God Killer? God Killer, this fantasy? No, we've got like a fantasy map. The Writing Retreat isn't. The Drift I don't think is. Well, Reach for the Stars is about like British pop, <laughs> but I don't think it counts. Lost in the moment and found won't be. The lake house? This is an arc I got sent? Oh, I requested and got sent. Uh, mm, it's not sounding. No, the author's from New York. Oh god, why is this so hard? Oh my god. <laughs> um, mm. This is awkward. Oh, Wives Under the Sea? I don't think that is. I'm trying to think of the books that I want to read the most. Oh my god, this is terrible. I don't think it is going to be set in the UK. Okay, wait, the author's born in London. <laughs> I don't know. There's some things that are obvious that I could go for. I could. I was just thinking I could read Murder Before Even Song by Richard Coles, but I've just read loads of murder mysteries, so I'm not really in the mood. The Retreat? By Sarah Pierce. Oh, an idyllic wellness retreat has opened up on the island of on an island off the coast of Devon. We're reading this. We're reading this. This is the sequel to the Sanatorium. If you've heard of that, it's got the same detective in it. And yeah, all I know about this is that we're at a yoga retreat and murders start occurring. I guess this is kind of similar to what I've just read, though. Hang on. Oh, do I want to read this? <laughs> I just don't know if this is the vibe. <laughs> Guys, guys, guys. What do I read? <laughs> Where is this set? Half a soul. Cause I would be, I really want to read this. Where is this set? <gasps> Regency England, Regency England. Okay, no, no, no. We're not reading the retreat. We're reading half a soul. I've been so excited to read this. All I know is that it's like cozy fantasy with romance. Regency England. Okay, this is what I need. See the retreat. I'd still would have been up for it. But it's too close to what I, I've been reading tons of murder mysteries. Yes, this is more of a thriller suspense kind of thing, but I am I am beyond excited to read Half a Soul. I don't care that I'm starting another series. Let's just ignore that. <laughs> I feel like this is like a five star prediction for me. I cannot wait.
Okay, I've just done yoga, hence being dressed like this. But I am halfway through Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater, and I'm enjoying it with caveats. <laughs> Sorry, what? Huh? You what? Where? Where? Are Ex you joking? Let me explain with Mora. I actually give up. <laughs> so basically, all you need to know is that we're in Regency England and we're following a protagonist who has half a soul. She had this encounter with like a fairy king or something, I don't know what the right terminology is, but had this encounter and since then she kind of hasn't felt emotions. She, yeah, has been like emotionally distant, struggled to feel emotions like a normal person. And she's in Regency England, her cousin is about to like enter society and try to get married and she meets the Lord Saucier. Yeah and they're like discovering stuff about this magical plague, what have you. Okay, it's really cute, right? I love the writing, but I cannot, I need to just get this out off my chest. I can't hide this, okay? <laughs> I have heard nothing but incredible things about this. I feel like everyone has given this five stars. It's not a five star for me right now. It's like a four, right? Which is great, a four is great, but I went into this with such like five star lofty expectations and it not achieving that is making me feel nervous and sick to my stomach and I feel like it's preventing me from enjoying it as much as I could. I think I've put my finger on it. I love Regency setting stuff, right? Like I love it. I love Pride and Prejudice. I love Jane Austen. Love it. But I feel like it's relying on that setting and the cultural like knowledge that we have of how the dresses look and how the places look and what have you. I feel like it's relying on it too much rather than like actually describing stuff. I don't feel like it's describing stuff. Stop relying on that body. And here's the thing, I'm not like, you know, I don't want heavy description, but I don't think we've had how someone looks really other than maybe the two, two guys that we have in this, especially how locations look. We haven't had it described. And so I'm struggling to picture stuff and it's annoying me. Struggling to picture stuff is always my number one, like, I hate it. And so for me, I feel like it's relying on too much. Oh, we know what a ball looks like. We know what when they go to dinner at someone's house that looks like, rather than actually setting the scene. They're like, oh, we just go to this person's house. I'm like, well, what? Like, I can't picture anything. So that's what's setting me back a bit. But I am enjoying the romance. I'm enjoying how that's growing. I really like them as characters. I think the writing is beautiful and has this great charm to it. So it's a lot, like, I'm really enjoying it. But that little, like not being able to picture stuff as well is kind of like holding me back. And I haven't been reaching for this. When did I find out I was gonna read this? Monday and it's Thursday. I am gonna go just finish it now. I'm gonna go sit downstairs and read it. But I've wanted to do like anything but read, basically. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it quickly. I am enjoying it, but I feel like I'm not quite getting the five star experience that I feel like everyone else has been getting. Okay. Um, hmm, so, okay, <laughs> I have finished Half a Soul, I don't want to talk about it guys, why does this happen to me? I didn't dislike it, it's a 3.5. Oh. You need to leave! I'm getting it out there, I'm putting it in the universe. What did I just think I was, what did I think was gonna happen for me doing that? Yeah, 3.5. I just felt like I never fully connected to the character. I swear everything is going wrong in my life. I just never fully connected to the characters or the relationship in particular, the romance. Like I could see it, I could vibe with it, I could recognize it, I could acknowledge it. But was I into it? No, I always felt like there was a degree of separation between me and the book. But from an objective standpoint, I enjoyed everything, but I never fully like got into it. It was like an a distance enjoyment. It wasn't, when for, to get a four or five, a book has to really pull me in. You know, we have to be in it together. Whereas I wasn't in this. <laughs> No, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna continue the series. I'm gonna at least try the next one out. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say. It just felt like kind of like fine. You know, I enjoyed it. I liked Dora as a character. I liked the Regency setting. I feel like there's not enough Regency historical books, but I have distinctly zilch to say to you. And that's really embarrassing. I'll see myself out, honestly. This is like, this is not good. I just feel like everyone's giving it five stars. I put it on TBR Kudo and everyone was like, oh my God, you're gonna give it five stars. You're gonna love it. It's gonna be like a new favorite book. I gave it five stars, I loved it. And I'm like, and it's like maybe even closer. If we're like 
took in, is it 3.49 or 3.51? It's 3.49. I feel like I'm breaking everyone's heart. <laughs> No, I'm gonna continue on, see if I can get more into the rest of the series. I've gotta admit, I'm feeling very hormonal today. Today has not been a good day up here. So, I, that could have played into it somewhat. I tried to like ig ignore that and like not have it affect my decision. But the thing is with reading, reading is subjective. Like how you are in life is gonna affect the books you read, whether you know it or you don't know it. Maybe there's a book that if you'd read it when you were sad, you would have loved it more versus when you read it was happy and vice versa. The how you are affects your reading. But um, yeah. <laughs> Should we go find out what we're reading next? Because I just want to pretend that this, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it wasn't everything that I wanted it to be. Let's find out what we're gonna read next. <laughs> Okay, it's time to find out what our next reading prompt is. I figured this time we would spin the wheel <laughs> rather than picking a card. I shake things up a bit, I know. We're getting, we do live life on the crazy edge over here. <laughs> wow, crazy. You're crazy, girl. By the way, I found out that this website has actually been created by a fellow booktuber, so I will leave her channel link down below. I only found out because I told my patrons I was doing this video and sent them the link to the prompts. And um, they were like, oh my god, I love her channel. Apparently she was Agatha Christie, so I've put some of her videos in my watch later. I haven't had a ton of time to watch YouTube since I found out. But um, yeah, I'm going to check her out, so go check her out down below if you also like Agatha Christie or reading prompts. So, okay. We're gonna spin. Are we ready? <laughs> Sick. Spin. We're just doing it. We're just doing it. We're not even thinking about it. We're just doing it. Holy shit. This one really builds up the suspense. A book with a great first sentence. Well, that's subjective. <laughs> Let's go look. There's a book that I got in TBR Cluedo that I feel like if I don't fit into this video, I will put off forever. <laughs> So, Ghosthood Song by Erica Waters. Does this have a great first sentence? Let's figure this out together. I am as restless as the ghosts today. See, I think that is a really good first sentence, but like, am I just saying that because I want to read it? Hmm. 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 I am as restless as the ghosts today. I'm as restless as the ghosts today. I'm as restless as the ghosts today. See, I think that kind of slaps, but I also want to read this for this vlog because <laughs> otherwise I'm going to put it off and not end up reading it. My initial reaction was like, yeah, that's good. But am I just kidding myself? No, I think that is a good first sentence. I think that's a great first sentence. I can think of one other book that does have a great first sentence, but it's like a five star prediction. And I think that I am not in the best reading mental state right now, so I don't want to read a first sentence. <laughs> but I know that the writing retreat has a great first sentence. But I'm as restless as the ghosts today. I'm reading it. It's not a shit first sentence. That's a really good first sentence. You can all count me. Anyways, we're gonna read Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. And I'm nervous because I didn't love the rest of the start, but a lot of you have promised that I will enjoy this. So let's give it a go. I am halfway to Ghostwood Song. Laura, you just came here. Why do you want to leave? I just got busted tickets, by the way. You should be really happy for me. Then. Oh, I gotcha. Do you want to come busted with me? Hmm? Hmm. No. <laughs> I'm halfway through Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters and I'm really enjoying it. So the plot of this is basically our main character, um, uh, God, there's a lot of layers to this. I'm trying to decide what is important to tell you and what is not. Basically, her dad has passed away. She lives with her stepdad and her mother. And then something happens and her brother gets accused of murder. And she is really tempted to play her father's fiddle that can raise the dead, but it comes with consequences. I think that's basically all you need to know. I just feel like this is a really solid YA. I don't really love YA anymore, as you guys know, or just at the moment, I haven't been reading a ton. And I just feel like this is such a good, like, YA mystery thriller horror kind of hybrid. It's creepy, it's eerie. We've got a bit of a love triangle going on. We've got family relationships. Like, I feel like it's got a lot of really good layers to it that I'm really enjoying. It's an easy read. The audiobook is great. The audiobook narrator has like a southern accent <laughs> and I don't know it's just putting me in the vibes we're very much in like the is it the swamps I don't know like the woods is kind of where we are and it's just really creepy and atmospheric and eerie spooky ooky, cokey 
and creepy. And we've really only gotten into that plot that I was telling you. We had a lot of building up of, I've got cat hair all over my face, I can feel it. <laughs> We had a lot of building up of like characters and their relationships and the dynamics between characters at the start. I don't know, I just feel like it's, it really built us up to a good place where I'm just really excited to continue. So I think I'm gonna finish this today. I'm really enjoying it. I'm gonna keep listening to your new book as I get some bits and bobs done today. Yeah, I was so worried because like I said, the rest of Stark Bearer Quarters was like a one star, 1.5 star for me. This feels completely different. The writing in this, I'm loving. Whereas the big problem with the rest of Stark for me was the writing. I felt like it was kind of like juvenile and the relationships between characters and the characters weren't fleshed out. All these characters feel fleshed out in a way that you know, oh yeah, I'm still reading YA. It's not like we're not getting to like deep motivations and thoughts. It kind of is, I feel like some YA you don't mind it being surface level-esque, especially when you have a lot of characters like we do in this. You have a lot of friends and siblings and what have you. It just feels like a great YA. I can't believe the same person wrote these two books. The writing feels so different to me. I don't know, I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it and then hopefully we'll pick our last book tonight. Should we tell them what we thought of the book, Rora? What should we say to them? Huh. <laughs> I'm really tired. <laughs> We've just been shopping today um, at Westfield. I got some nice clothes and I'm feeling very tired. I didn't film anything, because if you've been Westfield at a weekend, <laughs> You know, you don't want to be filming. They put me through purgatory. Yeah. Mm. They put me through hell on this earth. Anyways, I finished Ghostwood Song. You guys. Oh, it's going to be another 3.5. This vlog is boring. I'm saying it now. The reading prompts generator is fun, but another 3.5. And I've got to confess to you, we're going to go find out what our last book is. It's Saturday evening now. And this video is supposed to be going up tomorrow and I haven't edited any of it. So <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll pick a short book if we can, like a graphic novel for the last book, if the prompt fits it. Thoughts on this. I didn't love the second half as much as I loved the first half. I thought the whole resolution to the story was not as successful as the build up, as the kind of setting up of the story. And I was just a bit bored in the second half. I listened to this mostly almost all via audiobook. I didn't do a lot of reading physically and just the first half, I was so excited to do stuff so I could listen to the audiobook. Second half, not really. And I just feel like by the end, there was like so many different storylines. How do I explain this? <laughs> There's certain storylines, right, that like certain characters were associated with. But towards the end of the book, it was becoming clear that those characters weren't gonna be associated with like storyline A or storyline B. And so more storylines started being created near the end to like bring those characters back into the fold. Does that make sense? And that didn't work for me. I liked this, I enjoyed it. It's meant that I'm not swearing off Erica Waters. I thought the audiobook was fantastic. I thought the audiobook narrator was fantastic. Loved the beginning, loved the atmosphere, loved the setting. But what the fuck just happened with that focus? Apologies. <laughs> a lot that I really enjoyed about it, but for me, the resolution didn't work. Didn't work. So that's what I have to, I don't really have a ton to say to you. Oh, I did like the love triangle. I'm usually not a love triangle girly. What is going on? Why are you focusing on the bookshelf? There's people talking outside. <laughs> it's been a long day. I need a drink. You know, you know when you're shopping and you just take you, your jeans on and off, on and off, and all these different shops just try on jeans and other jeans and then don't get over your butt. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, usually I'm not into love triangles, but the love triangle really worked for me in this and it felt realistic, it felt truthful, it felt true to the story. I understand why it happened. I understand why it was in there. I liked how it resolved. I really liked the love triangle in this. So I think this is a solid YA. I enjoyed it. I think I really recommend this to young people in my life. I think they would really enjoy it. So yeah, but a 3.5. 3.5 is not a bad rating at all. At all. What was the last book read? Oh yeah, Half a Soul. Yeah, not a bad rating, these 3.5s. But I want something more than that. So let's go see what prompt we get. I don't know if this is crazy considering I want to read a short book, but I feel like to cul culminate the culmination of this video, <laughs> we should pick two prompts, one from a card, one from spinning the wheel. We're going to do it and then find a book that fits both of those prompts. The drama. 
I just think she's very delusional and maybe possibly insane. Are we just gonna do this? Am I actually gonna do this to myself? Yeah, and then if we have to push the vlog back, so be it. <laughs> okay, card time. Bang. A blue cover. Okay. Okay. A blue cover. A blue cover. Spin the wheel. A blue cover and... <sighs> a place in the title. No. <laughs> I don't think I have, like, any. What is our definition of place? <laughs> sort this by number of pages. Okay, let's go to my shortest books. No, I need to go to owned. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Is... Okay, hang on. Is the Tea Dragon Festival a place? <laughs> maybe pushing it. But it means I can read the next Tea Dragon book. Is going to the Tea Dragon Festival a place? Let's go to the Tea Dragon Festival. I feel like... <laughs> I feel like if you can say we're going to, to somewhere, then that's a place. Let's see if there's anything else that's short. The Saltwise Sea? Hang on, hang on, hang on. That might be a better bet. The Saltwise Sea is a place? It doesn't have to be a real place. <laughs> the Saltwise Sea is a place. The Tea Dragon Festival might have been pushing it, but let me know if you thought I would be allowed it. Because I think, you know, if you can go to a place, I don't know if the book actually has a festival. Um, oh, I don't have the audio. I feel like if I'm reading a book, an actual book, I need the audio. Four hours and 49 minutes. I'm gonna get the audio back, we're gonna do it. Along the Salt Wise Sea by A. Deborah Baker, AKA Shauna Maguire. The next in the uh, Up and Under, the first one is Over the Woodward Wall. Yeah, let's do that. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh wait, is that a blue cover? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I think that's blue. Yes, perhaps green. Did it, was it blue on the cover? I didn't save the prompt. Blue on the cover or a blue cover? Blue on, I think that's blue. Yes, I have to go find it. I don't know where it is, but that's blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bish bash bosh, okay. Depending on how I'm feeling at halfway, I might check in with you halfway. It's only about 190 pages. Um, or I may check in with you just when I finish it. We shall see, but yes, I will read that. Oh my gosh, progress in a series. Go Megan. <laughs> okay. I just gotta be honest, I, I went away and I read the whole thing because it didn't do it for me. This vlog, you guys. Right now, life couldn't get any worse. <laughs> oh my God, I thought it was gonna be such a fun vlog. Three stars, three stars. How have we had a vlog with a three and two 3.5s? That is like the most boring vlog to ever exist in existence ever. <laughs> So if you don't know, this is the second in this series where these two kids um, go through a door into this world, the up and under, and they're kind of trying to figure out how to get out and they're going on all these adventures in this new world. And you may be thinking, Megan, this is written by Sean Maguire and it just sounds like Wayward Children series. Kind of similar and not as good. <laughs> this is just written with like this younger tone that I don't think I enjoy and the books feel like nothing really happens. Oh my god, this feels sacrilegious. This feels actually, I can't believe I'm saying this about Sean and Maguire series, like one of my favorite authors, but sometimes you just gotta let her, you gotta know when to let it go, you know? What about us? What about you? What about you? Anyways, I am not gonna be continuing with this series. I know, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna be continuing with the series. It just didn't do it for me. I was kind of bored. I had the audiobook and it helped me get through it, but I can't say that I really enjoyed this. I, I don't know what to say to you. I don't feel any attachment though to the characters and we're following kind of at this point four characters that we were with in the last book a lot. And I just don't feel anything towards them. And there's, lo there's so many like 
queen and king and page of this and this and this and this. And I am so bad with character names. I can't keep track of which kings we've met and which queens we've met and which queen is this queen and which queen is that queen. I can't keep track of it. And the book even does do a good job. Like the whole first chapter, first 15-ish pages is kind of giving you a rundown of what happened in the last book. Cause it was like, <laughs> Megan's gonna have forgotten. I just can't remember who anyone is. So, wow. This was, this was a failure of a vlog. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I've gotta apologize for like lack of B-roll and stuff. Um, this week was one of the worst mental health weeks I've had in a while. I'm feeling much better now, but it was like a little bit of a rough week. And so I apologize if that kind of bled through in the quality of sock. You might have had a great time, I don't know. And I'm like talking myself down. But if you're like, this isn't up to her usual standard. Um, yeah, it's been a rough week. <laughs> but, and we haven't even read, a, if I had read a good book, maybe I would have been like incentivized and revitalized, but like all the books have just been fine. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. That's all I have for you. If you got to the end of the video, comment a ship emoji, cause we spend all this book on a ship, on a pirate ship pretty much. Um, and yeah, I promise my next vlog will be more fun. There's a lot of fun stuff planned for the next one and I'm really excited for it. This one, the reading prompts were fun, but it was a rough week. But I'm, it's all good now. I'm feeling much better now. Anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you soon. Bye.